So, hi developers, good evening and welcome to another session with me, Varun on Tech Tablet. In today's session, we will be looking at something which is new, something that's not covered on this channel till date, and something that's rocking the industry right now, and that would be data science. Right now, data science consists of a lot of fragments or a lot of parts, like it has TensorFlow, it has Scala, it has Python, it has a lot of other languages that go into it. Right, so we would be uncovering one after another and also we would be looking at some interview series based on the technical framework and you know keeping the technical nature of you know, the, i mean the kind of technical nature or technical vacancies or technical opportunities this job holds for us we'll be focusing on those kind of questions first and throughout these um, you know the series of interview you know technical interview question and answers we would be beginning with a beginner level and then we would be going to a mediocre followed by a high level right and at least talking about india and a lot of other asian countries that are very close to us data science is pretty new to us it's it's, it's begin or it's begun not more than one and a half or two years back and it's it's getting very loud and it's getting very uh, you know it's, it's getting it's getting very visibly clear and the potential of this module is increasing on a day-to-day -day basis since the last two to three years. Now, I think it's time where we have vacancies which have outnumbered the number of employees. And things wouldn't be the same if we look at it over the next two years of time. And these two years is what we have to ensure that we gain whatever we can and to set our foot hold strong while the module is still fresh. Right, so keeping all these things in mind, let us begin with the first video of data science interview series in which we would be talking about the general aspects of artificial intelligence. We would also have a lot of other videos in which we will be looking at uh, TensorFlow, Scala, Python and other languages one after another. But this would be a very generic version and this would focus on a lot of technical aspects. In series and if in case you like my videos you can follow me on my facebook or instagram which is varun rao underscore gemini at yahoo.com or varun rao underscore gemini now for all those of you who don't know me well the guy uh, sitting right there that's me and i have experience as an abapper and as a ui5 fury consultant which is a proprietary of sap in which they, there are a lot of languages which is which get involved like odata html javascript css xml jQuery, JSON, and yeah, they basically borrow principles from C, C Sharp, C++, and uh, the rest. And currently, I am also in preliminary stages of acquiring knowledge in these niche technologies. So let's all do this together and let's all grow together, right? That is the motive. So let us understand the agenda. It would be understanding the interview question and answers followed by our future as a data scientist. And the third and the most important thing, how do we answer in an interview? Because a lot of people who attend an interview are technically sound. They are basically technically outstanding. But then when they are asked to talk, they fail to express what, what they want to say. Or they probably fail to articulate their sentence because of which they get knocked out. And I, I don't think that this should be happening. right? So with a good will and with a very positive uh, or you know with a very good confidence let us begin understanding data science so all the best all the guys all the best and really cheers and hats off to all those people with you know tremendous years of experience who are still willing to learn something new and you know who are still trying to upgrade with time and technology all right so how would you define artificial intelligence as the most important and a very basic question well, when we talk about artificial intelligence, there are a lot of people in the market who believe that artificial intelligence would take away all the jobs we have right now, A, and B, we would have a very terrible conflict between human and robo, and C, humans would be left with nothing else to do. Well, this is a myth, at least for next good 40 to 50 years, because artificial intelligence is just evolving. And at a stage of evolution, it would be wrongful for, for, for any person to say that our jobs are lost, firstly. Secondly, now that we have un, uh, understood what, what is the difference between myth and reality, let us see why. 
See, artificial intelligence basically is a field of comp science which focuses on cognitive functions of human brain that are studied and 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 they are very closely being tried to to you know to being replicated. Now, the problem here is the repli replication because what human does is something that comes to us by nature, right? Now, what machine does is something that comes to it by virtue of the history it has collected or the history that we have given it to, correct? So, artificial intelligence as of today is being used for applications like computer vision, speech recognition, uh, uh, decision making probably, perception, understanding, reasoning, cognitive capabilities, etc. So, it's, it's, it's just ev evolving. It is the phase of the first technical shift wherein we are done with industrial phase, we are done with a bridge phase that is from 2000 to 2020 and now we are moving on to the actual, uh, to, the, to, the, to the world which we have only seen in movies, right? The trans, all these movies like Transformation, Transformers, sorry, you know, the, the, the movie Transformers, it's all very close to this, right? Next is, what is Turing test? And why do we use it? Well, a Turing test is a method of competing human intelligence versus the machine intelligence. It's, it's, it's a process wherein we challenge the machine. And this is done to ensure that this machine is equally intelligent and that it can also sufficiently gain knowledge from its experiences. So Turing test is basically to ensure that a machine has the capabilities to learn and then use its intelligence like a human, wherein it's trying to reciprocate things by learning. The third one is algorithm techniques in machine learning, name some. Well, there's supervised learning, unsupervised, semi-supervised, reinforcement learning, transduction, and learning to learn. We would be looking at all these variants of learning in detail as we keep going further, right? So do stay subscribed to this channel, guys. And also we have uh, covered some videos on understanding different languages like Python, Scala, Tableau, and uh, R, uh, R uh, Apache Spark. So yeah, these are the languages that we've already looked at, basics, <coughs> I'm sorry. And <coughs> as we keep going ahead, we would also be looking at these languages in technical terms. I mean, we would be trying to code on them and we would be gaining some knowledge through that, right? So the fourth one is what is a recommendation system? This is something that we all know, don't we? Just pause the video for a second and think what might a recommendation system be. Now, when you use an Amazon application for the first time, you make some list of choices and when you go to it the second time, you would be having suggestions. Now, how do you have that? That is because the system is predicting based on your preferences that you have already selected in your previous transactions. So it follows your choice patterns and, and, and gives you a recommendation accordingly so that you can make your choice faster and better. Uh, the fifth one is what is deep learning? Now, this is basically a subset of machine learning wherein we create an artificial multi-layered neural network. Neural network is a, a, a very close copy of human nervous system. And this network, this multi-layered artificial neural network has the capacity to learn by itself based on the instances that it has uh, seen or that it has come across through. For example, just like when you go through a cache, I mean, when you go, when you go to a website and when you type the word why, you would be having a, a complete autofill that is Yahoo or something like that. Now this is because you have something called as cache history, right? Deep learning is very closely comparable to that. Though there's a hell lot of difference between cache history and deep learning, but yeah, you know, you can try to compare it with that if you're just a beginner. What is the life cycle of machine learning process? It begins with collecting your data to preparing your data. Then you move on to choosing an appropriate model for your data because not every model, not every data set would be requiring the same variant of model to be designed. Then you would be training your data set for different experiences or instances. You would be evaluating and then you would be doing the parameter tuning and finally the predictions, which is the output. Now, during the evaluation, you might also want to do the, the Turing test uh, wherein you are trying to challenge the system. 
in terms of learning and reciprocation. The seventh one is what is fuzzy logic? Now, this is also a subset of artificial intelligence, wherein it is a way of encoding human learning for artificial process. And it is represented with if then, if else, else if, and if then rules. So if an action is happening, then you do this. If there is a speed breaker, then the automatic driving car should apply a brake. So it's based on if else and else. I mean, if there is a speed breaker, you know, brake else, keep going. And you know, if there's a speed breaker, then you should stop. You know, based on different logics, you give different uh, requirements, and you come up with a logic to ensure that the equipment is working as per your desired requirement. The eighth one is what are the applications of fuzzy logic, right? We were just talking about it. You have a facial pattern recognition that is sad, happy, cool, uncool, hot. Well, there's nothing like hot and cool, but yeah. Then air conditioners, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, and the skid braking systems that is ABS in all the vehicles, transmission systems, control of subway systems and unmanned helicopters. We all know that. Weather forecasting systems, project risk assessment, medical diagnosis and treatment plans followed by stock trading. All of these applications, uh, they have fuzzy logic involved in them. The ninth one is what is tensor flow, right? This We have a separate video that's made on what is tensor flow. It's basically an open source machine learning library. Okay. Now it's very fast, it's flexible, and it also has a very low level toolkit for complex algorithm solving. And it also offers the users the customizability to build experimental learning architectures and also to work on them to achieve a, 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 you know, a desired output. But then the most important thing that you've got to understand here is each and every dimension. Now let us say you have an X, you have a Y, you have a Z, and you also have a fourth dimension. All these dimensions are identified as tensors. And all these tensors together, they, they work and they produce a desired output. Okay. Finally, how do you install TensorFlow? Uh, you can uh, do this by using an installation guide or you have this option PIP install TensorFlow CPU using your uh, command prompt or you can also do the PIP install TensorFlow GPU using the command prompt. Right. So these are uh, the three options that you have through which you can install and you can use TensorFlow for your daily uh, usage. So these are the 10 questions that I have for you guys. And for all those of you who are new to this channel or who are new to this video series, we would be taking up 10 questions and we will be understanding them thoroughly. And then we will be moving on to another video with some more questions and some more technical knowledge uh, being exchanged and shared between us. Now, if in case you have liked this video and if you feel that you might have learned something new, guys, the like button is not very far from you. I would ask you to take a moment to hit the like button because it would encourage us to make more videos right and also do share this video if you feel that this might be useful for any of your colleague or your friend who's preparing for this latest series of technologies right and if you feel that there's anything missing or if you have a query please feel free to use the comment section below because that would not only be useful for me as I am also aspiring to be a data scientist, but that might also be useful for a lot of other people who are viewing this channel and who are viewing this video in specific. Thanks a lot for being there. I really wish each and every aspirant good luck for, you know, for, for attending the next interview and also for a project that you're about to take up. This is me, Varun Rao, logging off, hope, hoping to you know, meet you again in the next video with a lot of uh, you know, better updates and with better technical exchange of information between us. Have a great day. This is me, Varun Walking Off.